Hey, welcome back to The Recap, the video podcast ministry of First Baptist Kettering, where we discuss topics such as our vision, our values, and our sermons from week to week. The Recap exists to help others become transformed by Jesus. With that, let's get started. Back around the table with David and Chad. Great new series we started this week. We just wrapped mm-hmm. up Revelation. A lot of fun going through that that wonderful book that presents some challenges uh, mm-hmm. when we when we preach when we study, but also some just some great content for all of us as church members and and followers of Christ to to reflect on and be changed by. So as we begin this new uh, this new series, it's called what? What do we call this series, David? Sing we now of Christmas. Sing we now of Christmas. Yes. How did we come up with that title for this series? So, the most um, creative every year past, you right. get to this point in time <laughs> and you start thinking about Christmas, obviously. And every year the challenge is how do we approach this beautiful story, this text of the birth of Christ mm-hmm. in a fresh way? And that's challenging to do because so many p- people are familiar with it and... Um, you know, obviously when we preach, we're, we're making what is, uh, what we want to be common, right? Mm-hmm. The, the common knowledge of Christ, the common knowledge of his birth. We want to make that known amongst everybody, but we obviously want to challenge people. We want to encourage people. We want to push people deeper into God's word. And so Christmas sometimes can be hard to do that because of just the familiarity and mm-hmm. the fact that it's a text that you preach every year. Mm-hmm. Like Super most other sermon series we don't preach too. every year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have all the stuff going around about Christmas, so yeah. So uh, when I was thinking about it this year, uh, I love to sing Christmas carols. I'm not a great singer, but I will sing loud and proud on the front row. Yes, you will. And uh, you just hope that that's why I sit in the front so that nobody <laughs> can get an earful from behind. But uh, I just love to sing the Christmas carols, and I think they're so full of rich theology mm-hmm. that when I think about Christmas, it's one of the things I think most about is singing Christmas carols. So. We just kind of talked about it and felt like, man, what if we unpacked at least some of the origins or some of the um, the history, some of the theology in some of the hymns that we love to sing at Christmas? And so that's kind of how this ended up, um, you know, where it did. And we're unpacking some of the theological, you know, truths of some of these well-known. I was most Carol. disappointed when you wouldn't let us preach on All I Want for Christmas by Mar- Mariah Carey. Well, I you know, really... that was a close one, but it just barely <laughs> missed the cut. So. I've seen some interesting videos made from that song, though, recently. It seems to be hitting the, the Instagram feeds. People yeah. are So is that like it. your yeah. favorite secular Christmas song? Actually, it's song? not. I hate it. It's, okay. it's way overplayed. Yeah. Wouldn't you all agree with that? I mean... I, I honestly don't. I'm getting us off I, topic. I, I like I like the <laughs> the Christmas hymns, David. I I tend to. I like Dolly Parton's Hard Whoa. Candy Christmas. Hard Candy Christmas. Well, hey, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So here we are in the middle of this <laughs> seeing we now have Christmas series, trying to think of ways to present the timeless truth mm-hmm. of the coming of the Son of God in a way that is is timely, that will engage listeners and hearers. Um, amid the noise that surrounds Christmas. So this first, uh, this first uh, message this past Sunday, the text. Tell me, tell me about the text, David. Where, where did you, where do we go for this? Well, the, for this carol. The, and, fir- the first hymn, I was, I was a little worried about because it's, it's not the most familiar Christmas mm-hmm. carol. It's, it's come thou long expected Jesus, and it's once you start hearing it though, it's like, oh yeah, we do sing that mm-hmm. around Christmas time at church. You're not mm-hmm. going to hear that one sung on the radio, the the top you know traditional Christmas hits. But um, as we began to do a little bit of research, we we found out, of course, this is a one of the two thousand five hundred or wait six thousand five hundred songs that Charles Wesley wrote, right? Amazing. And he so wrote he wrote a lot of songs and. This one, he he was inspired after reading Haggai chapter two and his own personal devotions, and um, it it was from that with a mixture of I, I think him being burdened for mm-hmm. the poor people in in England that were in his city, as well as the orphan crisis that mm-hmm. was in uh, apparent in England, and and God just laid that on his heart, and so that was kind of the springboard giving that little bit of history. And I don't know, I haven't heard yours yet here at the Sugar Creek campus, but how did you do an intro into that? Same way. I yeah. mean, talked about 
Charles and mm-hmm. West and uh, first name basis. Brother. Yeah, <laughs> Charles Charles Wesley and his brother John. Yeah, uh, and then yeah. talked about uh, the for me the fun part was then the song really sat in an obscure place for a long time mm-hmm. until Charles Spurgeon. Yeah, he uh, made it preached, popular. Uh, yep. Preached mm-hmm. a message using that prayer, yeah. mm-hmm. and it took off. And so, kind of, I used the word. It went viral. You yeah, know, yeah. After Charles Spurgeon tweeted about it, there. That's I'll say this: stuff. a few years ago, it came across um, one of the artists that I like to listen to. They re- they they redid this carol, and I hadn't heard it in years. And I was listening to the words, and like we've talked about the theology, and it's so rich. Um, two two stanzas, right? Pretty very short, mm-hmm. but so packed with truth so as we set up this first uh, message of the advent season leading up to to christmas what a great what a great hymn to put first mm-hmm. so let's think about uh, let's talk about how do we how do we put this one at the at the first like the beginning of this series why did we why do we pick this one well, I think there's we have a lot to look forward to in the in the weeks ahead. You know, the first the Sunday in Advent, we're looking toward we're we're looking toward Christmas, our Christmas Eve service. But I I believe that passage in Haggai mm-hmm. was perfect um, because what it does is it it gives us a snapshot, especially that verse seven is what inspired mm-hmm. uh, Wesley when he uh, wrote those words when he first penned those words, and it's that picture of the prophet Haggai. Um, this challenge that he has to motivate the leaders of Israel after being given the green light to go back to their homeland and to rebuild the temple and their homes. It's mm-hmm. this challenge that he has. Um, we have so much to expect, right? It's, it, he wanted them to see the why. What, why are we doing this? It's you know, the same thing as we talked about us looking you know, forward to Christmas or not looking forward to, you know, preaching the same thing over and over every Christmas. The same thing. Yes. Yes. The same thing was true for, for that guys. We have this beautiful privilege of worshiping God in the temple. Yeah. It's not like what Solomon Mm -hmm. is not Solomon's Mm -hmm. temple, but it's still, still nonetheless, God's going to use this. Mm -hmm. So I I really see Haggai as kind of like what we are cheerleaders for the people of God, just motivating them about, you know, the true meaning of Christmas mm-hmm. and why Christ came. Why do we worship him every Sunday? So yeah. uh, what would you say to that? No, I agree. I think it's about expectancy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's setting the people up in, in the time of Haggai to expect great things, mm-hmm. right? That they were so busy looking back about what it used to be that they weren't looking ahead to what God mm-hmm. was going to do. Mm-hmm. And God was instilling in their heart a sense of expectancy. Mm-hmm. And while we look in the rear view mirror also at the advent, right, the birth of Christ, we also look back with a sense of expectancy that Jesus is coming again. Mm-hmm. And so while we think about the manger and we think about Bethlehem and we think about Mary and Joseph, all of those things ought to then take us on a, um, on the trip through the cross, through the empty grave, but then to mm-hmm. the eastern sky where the scripture says he will return. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also ought to live with expectancy. Yeah, that's the other theme of, of you know, of this particular Christmas carol. Mm-hmm. It's it's the coming of Christ, not just, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. his second coming. And not that, I think that was beautiful as well. Right, I think that's what the second verse talks yeah. about. You know, born your people to deliver, yeah. born a child yeah. and yet a king. But yeah. then he moves forward, born to reign in us forever. Now, now your gracious kingdom Come bring. Yeah. yeah. So there's a sense of even in this moment, we're expecting the coming and the mm-hmm. fulfillment of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. So as I think about you know, this, this particular Advent season, looking in the midst of a culture that is, is looking for hope, looking for peace, looking for, um, some type of uh, definition of, of justice and, and grace, that part you just you just quoted, Chad, born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us mm-hmm. forever. Come, now thy gracious kingdom bring. Mm-hmm. Uh, by thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. Right. Mm-hmm. So of all the things that could, mm-hmm. that could vie for control in our hearts, let Christ reign in our hearts again it's just a refreshing way mm-hmm. and then he pulls the old ephesians one out here mm-hmm. by your all sufficient merit raise us to your glorious throne like, come on it's not our merit it's his mm-hmm. merit mm-hmm. right it's not of our works we don't experience the kingdom or come with expectancy in mm-hmm. ourselves we mm-hmm. come with uh, his merit mm-hmm. right we approach his throne of grace through him so one of the joys of, of this season 
is uh, preaching the coming son, reflecting on the coming of the son of God and marching us all the way to, Chad, like you said, the cross, the empty tomb, and to looking to the eastern sky. This is the the exclamation of God's movement for me. Like I, I read this and I say, man, this is, the, this is that mark in time when the Bible shifts, when the story says, here he is. Let's, let's recognize who he is. And this really reflects that. So this time of year, I hope our messages that we bring through the Advent season up to Christmas would be a sense of encouragement to those that listen. I'm really excited about this series. And mm-hmm. um, what do we have to look forward to this coming week? We're doing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Mm. And we are... The oldest Christmas the carol. The oldest Christmas carol. We'll yeah. give a little history. Mm-hmm. It's always fun to... Originally about what? That. It's a Gregorian it was, chant. Yeah, okay. a chant. I'm so not David's going to be doing that at the Eastmont campus. So, <laughs> so tune we in want to Eastmont. Yeah. to be high. No. <laughs> so please come here, David, do his Benedictine Gregorian chant. No, I am thankful they put music to it. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful It'll be fun. Song. And uh, we'll get to talk about Emmanuel, God with us, that yeah. God would send yeah. his son. Mm -hmm. Uh, the word would become flesh and dwell amongst us amen amen well thank you so much for tuning in for this episode of the recap we hope it's been encouraging to you whether you join us in person or online for worship we look forward to seeing you and again if you haven't done so click down below like and subscribe to this podcast this channel so you can get all the most recent content from us we hope this has been helpful for you we look forward to seeing you again soon continue to be the church 